Hey guys, it's Tom from Fisky Astro and um, today we're going to be looking at my uh, astrophotography setup, my telescopes, and the cameras, mount and power supplies that I use to take um, these astrophotography photos. I've only been doing this for a couple of years now. But, um, I want to share with you, well, some people, if they have never done it before, they want to look into what they need to do to get this um, and to get started on the hobby, so hopefully this will help some of you. Okay, so for a mount I have the Skywatcher HEQ5 Pro, German equatorial mount with a go-to upgrade and also upgraded right ascension and declination bolts. Just here, the little knobs. They're supposedly meant to be quite weak or they break off inside the scope if you don't handle them properly. Um, it's generally a good mount, it's, uh, so it's controlled and I can send commands to it through my computer to adjust to wind. So with any good astrophotography setup, you need a good uh, polar alignment. So this uh, HGQ5 Pro has a polar scope, uh, illuminated polar scope actually, and uh, it just comes out through here. This one does. And uh, you can uh, look through to get a really nice polar alignment. As I put when I do setup, um, they are sitting on these suppression pads, small uh, rubber suppression pads. There we go, focus. Um, I got them from uh, Amazon for about twenty pounds. Uh, generally, really good. I've seen good up, um, less vibrations when I've been looking visually at the moon. My main imaging scope at the moment is a Skywatcher 200p. Um, I got this from second hand from a guy down in Colchester for I believe £150. He had never used it. The only thing he did do was put this handy little bar on for me to carry it around with because he was quite old. He struggled to carry it. Um, it comes with a straight through 9 by 30 finder scope, but this is an upgraded uh, um, right angle erected uh, scope because I find using these are much easier. And my favorite part of my setup is the Altair Astro 50mm uh, guide scope package. Um, it comes with a GP mono, GP cam mono uh, camera. It's uh, very uh, sensitive. Uh, it gives you the ability to um, detect stars, send commands through to your laptop, right down here. Uh, my laptop is a ThinkPad W520, one of them old beastie big ones. There I run all my software. Um, it then sends commands through P uh, PHD2, push here dummy. Um, that's the program, not me. <laughs> um, it sends the commands from the uh, software back into the back of the, um, the um, Skywatcher uh, HEQ5 Pro mount. So that's to adjust any wind um, uh, problems or uh, if, if we had issues during alignment. Okay, so I also have one of these multi finder blocks from First Light Optics. Uh, they, they can hold an additional three finder scope scopes but um, I found that can only really get two in there, it's too tight with my um, uh, tube here, the focuser that sticks outside, but uh, it's actually a really, really useful tool. Most, some people will probably say that I've got too much hanging off my scope, but because I'm a bit of a beginner, having a right angled finder scope is really useful, instead of just relying on these two electronic scopes to find my targets. Um, it's really, I find it really useful. My main imaging camera is this uh, Canon 1000D. It's relatively old, um, but it's one of the best beginner cameras to do astrophotography. It's currently unmodified. There's a little bug on there. We're shooting in the daytime. Uh, it's unmodified, but I do have one which is IR cut. As I know, I cut through well, and um, but it has a big blob on the uh, sensor, so I need to get that cleaned um, before I use it properly. But uh, all my f uh, photography is generally done with unmodified cameras at the moment, but uh, that should change soon. Um, on the front of the camera, just here, I've got a T T thread to connect 
Canon uh, Canons to uh, Astro or telescope threads. It's got a T thread 48 millimeter, and on the end of that, just in between it, there's a 0.9 Skywatcher coma corrector, so we get sharper stars on the outside, like the outside of the um, circumference of the image that we get. Some of you have probably already noticed, but um, um, I actually have made my own do shields. Um, you can buy them, they're quite expensive. This is flopped down in the heat. It's usually not like this in the cold. That never happens, it's fine. It's just really hot right now. But um, I've also got one here on my guide cam. Um, they're slightly wider than normal at the moment because I've actually left the caps on just so dust and flies don't get in my uh, optical equipment. Same with every camera on, that's all got the lens caps on at the moment. But um, instead of spending a lot of money on uh, juice shields uh, these actually cost me about two pounds to make we've got foam from Hobbycraft a bit of felt on the inside I can take it off actually I can just show you so we've got this foam which we cut and then we've uh, made a big tube out of the foam uh, stuck felt on the inside to stop reflections of light that do hit it and so they don't bounce around and then there's got some Velcro on the end, which we use to then secure it. When you have Velcro, you can also adjust it for sizes, so you don't always have to have it on the same scope. It's the same with this one. I haven't made one for my um, finder scope just yet, but um, I haven't got the materials at the moment. I need to go pick some up. One of the big problems I found with doing astrophotography is that you always want to find a dark site, but I'm um, trying to get power that can control such vast amount of objects is difficult so what I did was I decided to make my own one because I heard rumours of people having the Celestron and Skywatcher batteries but what happens is when they are flattened so much or too low they will never recover so I decided to get this Stanley toolbox I think it was like 20 quid uh, got these marine grade These marine grade, grade flaps, uh, they all output 12 volts just like your car. There's another two over here. Now these ones, uh, um, two of them push out uh, USB so we can power two con uh, controllers or heaters through USB or if you want to charge your phone that's fine. And there's also a voltage meter so I know what sort of voltage it's pushing out. Not really too useful but we'll see. Mm. We can go through here. That's not the switch. It may look like a bomb. It's not a bomb, I promise you. And inside we have uh, what looks like a bomb. It's not a bomb. It's just a um, 100 amp hour battery for uh, an AGM battery from uh, for a caravan. But um, it should last 100 amp hours for my scope. Uh, also, we've got a fuse box here full of different fuses, so I can power several different items. Um, without uh, blowing my kit. Um, in the end, this didn't cost too much money. The main thing was the battery, but um, it's really useful to learn electronics and get some knowledge of it, especially if you're going to make stuff like this. It's really useful. I, I uh, recommend doing that if you can, but uh, make sure you get someone who knows what they're doing with electronics first. So yeah, I forgot to mention that I don't actually use the Skywatcher power cable that comes with it. Um, I use this Lynx Astro silicon um, power cable from 12 volts uh, to a Sinscan, uh, um, Skywatch amount. Um, mainly because I had problems with the original one, it actually was shocking me completely. Well, the whole legs of the telescope was providing electric shocks when I touched it, so I had to replace that. But um, this is a much more capable and uh, useful cable because it doesn't bundle up, it doesn't uh, go all twindly. Also, also useful, I have the button of mass to achieve as close as focus as I can. You put this on the top between uh, on the end of the telescope and uh, take a photo through your camera software and you should you see a star um, shape and uh, you have to get the, the, the bars of the stars as tight as you can 
looking yeah essentially as tight as you can really to achieve as the best focus possible and um, I use Backyard EOS which is, my computer is actually not on at the moment but I'll show a little diagram in a sec and I use that to control the uh, camera, how long the exposure is, the ISO levels, the aperture, all this so I can get a really nice shot so yeah this is my setup if there's any questions pop them in the uh, in the comments below but um hopefully soon I'll get out there and um show you what we can find together